The north is my favorite part of Thailand. Though relatively few Indian tourists come here compared to the lakhs who go to the south or to Bangkok. It's the north I love for its color and its peace. Far away from the hustle and bustle of the big city, from the tourist haunts, from the world famous beaches, this is the heart of Thailand. Clean, green and completely serene. And then there's the culture. High on a hill, far above Chiang Mai, the principal city of the north is the temple of Doi Suthep. It's just one example of the architecture, tradition and culture that make Northern Thailand so special. Not that the North is lacking in cultural experiences and strangely enough, some of them may even seem familiar to us in India. realize this but the northeast of Thailand is the part of Thailand that in many ways is the closest to India it's an extension of Assam of Burma and of our very own Northeast you can tell this in the people in the dress in the food and when they want to do folk theater guess what they fall back on the Ramayan of course it's not quite our Ramayan but there's enough in it for Indians to recognize the story in many ways, it's another example of the cultural ties between India and Thailand that go back 2000 years. It also has a lot to do with sheer proximity. Because the north is so near our country, hill tribes from India and Thailand have intermingled over the centuries. At every step, you are reminded of the Indian Northeast and of our shared cultural traditions. There's one more thing that India and Thailand have in common, and that's our love of the Asian elephant. At the Anantara camp near the border of Thailand and Burma, they offer to teach you how to ride an elephant. Like most Indians, I don't think this was such a big deal. Many of us are used to sitting on elaborate cushioned platforms placed on the backs of elephants while mahouts guide the jumbos forward. But as I wish to discover, that isn't exactly how it works in Northern Thailand. There's no platform, there's no saddle, and there isn't even a mahout. Can you bend? Then to turn the elephant, you say bend. Ben. And you have to kick opposite ear. So to turn left, you kick the right ear. To turn right, you kick the left ear. Alright? Yeah. Okay. Back long means head down. Back long. Back long. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's it. Hold on to this ear. Hold it tight. There we go. Hold on tight. Okay. Say so look. Good job. Okay. Now hands in the middle of her head. Okay. And move forward. Right up here. Like a jockey. You're all alone on the elephant. And you ride it bareback, your posterior perched precariously on the body of the swerving animal. If you do want a sense of security, well then you grab its neck. If you want it to turn right or left, you pull its ears. But basically, you just hang on for dear life. I'm not sure if this is obvious on camera, but I have to tell you that I was terrified the whole time. But once it started, it got a little better and I even managed to frame complete sentences. You know, when people heard I was doing a show called Veer Sangvi's Thailand and they said, of course, there'll be many shots of you in a tuk-tuk. And I said, why? And they said, because that's the most common mode of transport. That's the mode of transport that epitomizes Thailand. And I said, no, it doesn't actually. The mode of transport that epitomizes Thailand is this, the elephant. Brave words perhaps, but I have to concede that there is something about riding bare back on an elephant that makes you feel adventurous, courageous and very terrified all at the same time. Geography books will tell you how important elephants are to Thailand. 
and you will learn how much the thighs depend on them. But what you won't learn until you actually get to the north is the extent to which they make use of everything that comes from the elephant. And yes, that includes elephant poo. It's a strange story. In some parts of the world, they make coffee from the droppings of wild cats. These cats roam through coffee plantations, they eat coffee beans straight off the bushes and then they let the beans travel through their systems. Each day, poo collectors go out and collect those droppings. Because the cats cannot digest the beans, they are excreted whole along with the poo. These beans are used to make a very expensive coffee that is world renowned for its smoothness. In Northern Thailand they do much the same sort of thing. Except that they don't depend on wild cats, they let their elephants do the swallowing. And yes, the dropping as well. At Ananta they made me a cup of elephant coffee. Perhaps it came from the very elephant I had ridden that morning. And I had no idea it would be joining me afterwards, after a fashion at least, for coffee. We're drinking elephant poo. That's one way to put it. All right. Another way to put it is the most expensive cup of coffee in the world. How much does this cost? Uh, per kilogram, $1,100. So each cup would be how much? What you, we're experiencing you, is about 50 US dollars. 50 US dollars for you and me having this beautiful cup of coffee. And the elephant gets none of it. The elephant actually gets none of it. The it's just a load of crap as far as he's concerned. <laughs> yeah, right. The elephant gets a veterinarian out of it to look after them. Okay, so you're, you're selling this now as a charitable uh, activity. Absolutely. Yeah, right. 8% okay. of what you just paid, thank you for paying for this coffee. 8% okay. of that just went back to the Golden Triangle That's Asian very Elephant sweet. Foundation. Very sweet. Now, what does the journey through the elephant do for the coffee? The secret about the coffee is the bitterness. Now, you do not want bitterness in coffee. Right. With this coffee, when we're going to taste it, little to no bitterness. The reason for that is the, in, the bitterness in coffee is in the protein. The enzymes in the elephant break down the proteins. So that takes away all the bitterness. That's interesting. So that's every coffee bean that's come out here has been collected on your ground? Correct. So it's rarely the whole notion of homegrown. Absolutely. And right, right. No, now there are only 50 kilograms available in, in the whole world. world. In the whole world. The moment of right. truth. Mm. I can smell the elephant. <laughs> hmm. Very malt taste. If you say so. <laughs> it's kind of lacking in body, isn't it? So it's it's, it's, it's I suppose you'd say that's smoothness, but... Yeah. Uh, I think that may be misleading here is with the process which we just saw a couple of minutes ago it looks like you're making an espresso because yeah. of the process it is not and an when espresso. you look at it you express this, uh, you expect a strong espresso assault on your palate yeah. but isn't it it's actually it's very very mild. malt coffee so you will not take this as a shot in the morning as an espresso yeah. shot this is a malt cup of coffee to be enjoyed after dinner it goes lovely with a piece Does of coffee. Does it have less caffeine? No no same amount the same caffeine. The caffeine yes, same coffee would have it's very nice it's very very yeah. different yeah, yeah. For the price it is. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure about the price, but it's a good cause. It goes to vet for elephants. And as far as my viewers are concerned, one more thing I've done for you, dear viewer, drunk elephant poo. One thing you learn very quickly in the north of Thailand is that not everything that looks like a temple is in fact a temple. And even if a building looks old, that doesn't mean that it really is old. You can call it timelessness, you can call it architectural integrity, or you can just call it pastiche. And there's the slightly strange white temple. In a land that's so full of ancient temples, it's unusual to find one that's just 15 years old. This modern white temple is the brainchild of a famous Thai artist. He built it, he says, out of love, and he hopes that over the next century, future generations will develop and expand the idea. If you look at it, bits of it are actually very, very stunning, based on ancient Thai architecture. But some of it is more unusual, based on comic books, kish. So the final effect is Thai culture and part theme park.